hello friends i welcome you in lecture number 5 on estimation so far we have discussed about point estimation in point estimation we are considering a single numerical value of a statistic to estimate the given population parameter for example to estimate the population mean uh, we have used a single value of sample mean that is x bar as a point estimate of this population mean so so far in the lectures which we have discussed we were be discussing point estimate that is single numerical value of a sample statistic to estimate the population parameter now point estimate is not uh, uh, very uh, authentic or it is uh, uh, not uh, advisable to use point estimate because sometimes the error between this uh, two is very large so instead of uh, using point estimate we can use the range of values to estimate the population parameter so instead of using single numerical value we can use the interval to estimate the given population parameter so that process is known as interval estimation we can find out some interval in which this population mean mean lies so how to construct that interval that we are going to discuss in this lecture and that method of constructing those type of interval is known as interval estimation so as i discuss point estimates cannot really be expected to coincide with the quantities they are intended intended to estimate that is uh, suppose we consider x bar as point estimate then we cannot expect x bar to coincide with population mean mu always hence it is sometimes preferable to replace them that is to replace point estimates with interval estimates interval estimates means uh, they are the intervals for which we can assert with a reasonable degree of certainty that they will contain the population parameter under consideration so how to construct those type of intervals that we are going to discuss now in earlier lectures we have discussed about uh, error maximum error of estimate uh, between sample statistic and population parameter or we have discussed about the error in estimating a population mean by a sample mean and we have uh, seen that if we consider a large sample that is sample size is greater than or equal to 30 and if we are considering a sample random sample from a population with mean mu and standard deviation sigma then we have discussed in earlier lectures that this error is at most z alpha by 2 times sigma over square root of n and we have discussed that this inequality is satisfied with 1 minus alpha into 100% confidence level or we can say that with 1 minus alpha probability this inequality is satisfied and we have discussed all these things in earlier lectures now we try to simplify this inequality uh, this we can rewrite as minus z alpha by 2 times sigma over square root of n which is less than or equal to x bar minus mu which is less than or equal to z alpha by 2 times sigma over square root of n now if we multiply this whole inequality by minus 1 uh, we can see here sign will change and instead of less than or equal to we will obtain greater than or equal to and here we will have negative sign and this x bar will be negative this will be positive and this we can rewrite as suppose we write in the form of less than or equal to this we can rewrite in this way 
न्यू माइनस एक्स बार विच इज लेस देन और इक्वल टू जेड अल्फा बाई टू टाइम्स सिगमा ओवर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन नाउ सपोज वी आर इंटरेस्टेड दिस इन इक्वालिटी इन टर्म्स ऑफ पॉपुलेशन मीन म्यू देन वी एड एक्स बार टू ईच टर्म इन दिस इन इक्वालिटी सो फ्रॉम दिस वी कैन री राइट दैट एक्स बार माइनस जेड अल्फा बाई टू टाइम्स सिगमा ओवर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन लेस देन और इक्वल टू मीन म्यू लेस देन और इक्वल टू एक्स बार प्लस जेड अल्फा बू बाई टू टाइम्स सिगमा ओवर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ सो हियर वी कैन सी दैट पॉपुलेशन मीन म्यू लाइज बिटवीन दिस टू क्वान्टिटीज एंड इफ वी कंसिडर पर्टिकुलर वैल्यू ऑफ सैम्पल मीन से एक्स बार ओके वैन वी आर राइट वी आर राइटिंग कैपिटल एक्स बार देन दिस इज ए रैंडम इंटरवल फॉर डिफरेंट वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स बार वी विल हैव डिफरेंट इंटरवल्स बट इफ यू कंसिडर पर्टिकुलर वैल्यू ऑफ एक्स बार विच वी कैन ऑब्जर्व फ्रॉम द गिवन सैम्पल देन वी कैन री राइट दिस एज एक्स बार माइनस जेड अल्फा बाई टू टाइम्स सिगमा ओवर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन लेस देन और इक्वल टू पॉपुलेशन मीन एक्स बार प्लस जेड अल्फा बाई टू टाइम्स सिगमा ओवर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन सो वी कैन से दैट द इंटरवल फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट एक्स बार माइनस जेड अल्फा बाई टू टाइम्स सिगमा ओवर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन टू दिस पॉइंट एक्स बार प्लस जेड अल्फा बाई टू सिगमा ओवर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन दैट इंटरवल कंटेंट्स द पॉपुलेशन मीन सो हियर वी हैव ऑप्टेन द इंटरवल कंटेनिंग पॉपुलेशन मीन सपोज वी हैव पॉपुलेशन मीन समवेयर हियर एंड दिस पॉइंट इज एक्स बार माइनस जेड अल्फा बाई टू सिगमा ओवर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन हियर वी विल हैव समवेयर एक्स बार प्लस z alpha by 2 sigma over square root of n so we can say that this interval contains population mean mu uh, with probability 1 minus alpha or with 1 minus alpha into 100 percent confidence so this type of interval is known as confidence interval for population mean and uh, we can write the confidence interval formula if we don't want to write down in this way we can simply write that confidence interval formula for large samples is given by x bar plus or minus z alpha by 2 times sigma over square root of n where we consider the level of confidence as 1 minus alpha into 100% and we know that this x bar is the point estimate this x bar is point estimate for population mean and as we have discussed in earlier lectures this is nothing but maximum error of estimate which we denote by capital e and it is also known as margin of error so the confidence interval formula is made up of two points point estimate and margin of error so this is the confidence interval formula for large samples in which we know what is population standard deviation if population standard deviation is known and we have a large sample and if x bar is the observed value of sample mean capital x bar then using this formula we can find out the confidence interval which contains the population mean mu with 1 minus alpha into 100% confidence level this quantity is also sometimes known as degree of confidence so degree of confidence is important the most commonly used values are 95% and 99% sometime 90% is also used but this is not the uh, these are not the only three values 
they can give us any value between 0 to 100 as level of confidence now sometimes for population uh, which is we are considering sometimes standard deviation is not known but sample standard deviation is known to us so in that case uh, we can replace this uh, population standard deviation by sample standard deviation provided that we are considering large samples so in case of large samples if population standard deviation is known uh, we will use this as confidence interval formula for population mean and if sample is large but sigma is not known then we can replace sigma by sample standard deviation in the formula of confidence interval for population mean mu so we will remember this uh, formula for constructing a confidence interval for large samples if uh, sigma is known or sigma is unknown so i have written all these things here so i am not repeating we have discussed all these things we will just remember that uh, this is the random interval containing population mean mu and when the observed value of sample mean say x bar becomes available we obtain this uh, confidence interval formula so when a sample has been obtained and the value x bar has been calculated we can claim that with 1 minus alpha into 100 percent confidence that the interval from this point to this point contains population mean mu this type of interval is referred to as confidence interval for population mean mu having the degree of confidence or level of confidence 1 minus alpha into 100 percent the end points of the confidence interval are called confidence limits so these two are the confidence limits this is lower confidence limit this is here i forgot to write down x bar it is x bar plus z alpha by 2 sigma over square root of n so this is upper confidence limit and this is the confidence interval for large samples that is we are considering sample size 30 or more the degree of confidence or confidence level can be any number between 0 and 100 but the most common values are 90 percent 95 percent and 99 percent so we consider this confidence level as 1 minus alpha so whenever confidence level is 90 percent 1 minus alpha will be equal to 90 therefore alpha will be equal to 0 0.10 similarly for 95 percent confidence level alpha will be equal to 1 minus 0.95 that is 0 0.05 or we can say 5% and for 99% confidence level value of alpha is 0 0.01 sometimes the population standard deviation sigma is not known in this situation if sample is large it is generally safe to approximate sigma by the sample standard deviation s so these are the two important formulas for large sample 1 minus alpha 100 percent confidence interval for a population mean if population standard deviation is known the formula is x bar plus z alpha by 2 times sigma over square root of n and if population standard deviation is not known here we replace population standard deviation by sample standard deviation provided that we have a large sample now if sample size is small that is suppose we have n is less than 30 then if you recall uh, we have discussed in earlier lectures uh, one another distribution known as t distribution so in that uh, lecture we have discussed that if sample size is small and if we are considering a population which is a normal or uh, the sample from which we are the sample uh, which we are drawing from a population is having normal distribution 
then we have discussed that this random variable x bar minus mu divided by s over square root of n s is sample standard deviation if sigma is unknown so this random variable is having a t distribution and uh, we have discussed about t distribution in previous lectures so if sample size is less than 30 that is if we have a small sample then we know that this random variable is having a t distribution provided we are drawing a sample from a population which is having normal distribution and we have discussed how to find out the uh, critical values of t if you recall we have discussed that the distribution of t is also having a bell shaped curve and we have discussed that if uh, area to the right side of this point is alpha by 2 then we denote this point by alpha by 2 and we know that probability that t is greater than t alpha by 2 is alpha by 2 and this is bell shaped curve so this area is also alpha by 2 and in the middle we have 1 minus alpha so here also we can construct a confidence interval with 1 minus alpha into 100 percent confidence level uh, following the same procedure which i just discussed instead of z alpha by 2 we will write t alpha by 2 and sigma will be replaced by sample standard deviation so following the same procedure uh, we have obtained the confidence interval formula for small samples and in that case we are using t distribution for small samples that is n less than 30 we use t distribution provided it is reasonable to assume that we are sampling from a normal population we recall that this t equal to x bar minus mu over sample standard deviation divided by square root of n is a random variable with t distribution and with 1 minus alpha into 100 percent confidence level so using the same procedure which we did for that z equal to x bar minus mu over sigma over under root n we obtain this uh, formula for confidence interval for small samples x bar minus t alpha by 2 times sample standard deviation over square root of n less than or equal to mu less than or equal to x bar plus t alpha by 2 times sample standard deviation divided by square root of n so this is confidence interval for small samples drawn from a normal population so we will remember that for small samples which we are taking from a normal population the formula for confidence interval is x bar plus or minus t alpha by 2 times sample standard deviation over square root of n with 1 minus alpha into 100 percent confidence level that is we are 1 minus alpha into 100 percent sure that this interval contains the population mean so in this way we can construct the confidence intervals for large samples as well as small samples so these two are the formulas for large samples with 1 minus alpha into 100 percent confidence level and if we have a small sample uh, we will use this formula x bar plus or minus t alpha by 2 s over square root of n and we have discussed in earlier lectures on t distribution that how to obtain this value of t so this is all about confidence intervals i hope you have understood them in the upcoming lectures we will discuss how to construct confidence intervals for a given problem so this is all about this session i hope you like it thank you very